Well, hello, friends. My name is Justin, and I am one of the pastors here at One Life Church. Thank you for joining us for our uh, Good Friday service. Tonight, we come together to remember um, the crucified Savior and Messiah, Jesus. Tonight, we're going to worship through song, through scripture reading, and we're also going to walk through the stations of the cross. Our main goal tonight is to lift Jesus on high. We are trusting Jesus' words in John chapter 12 when he says, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. So tonight, we gather to lift Jesus on high so that every man and every woman would be drawn to the person of Jesus. May Jesus and Jesus alone be magnified in our presence tonight. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 8 says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him, and we looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream, that he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. Let's pray together. Oh, Jesus. You were motivated by your burning love for us. You were willing to be crucified and to shed your most precious blood for our redemption and our salvation. Tonight, we believe that you are here among us as we gather together in remembrance of your death. We fully trust in your mercy. Forgive us our sins and teach us to forgive one another. Awaken us to the depth of your love for us, the hope that we have in you, and your grace that saves us. We surrender to your plan, your will, your mission, and your desires. Amen and amen.
Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Don't you hear all of these charges they're bringing against you, Pilate demanded. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Meanwhile, the leading priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas! Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And they shouted back, crucify him! Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder. Crucify him! Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, We will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them.
Jesus flogged with a lead tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns and they put it on his head. And they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked as they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I am going to bring him out to you now. But I understand clearly that I find him not guilty. And Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said, Look, here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priest and the temple guards began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, By our law, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me? Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him. But the Jewish leaders shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the Stone Pavement. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. And Pilate said to the people, Look, here is your king. And they yelled, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar. The leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
During the cross by himself, he went to the place called Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, change it from the king of the Jews to he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate replied, no, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says, they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did.
at noon, darkness fell across the whole land. At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on the end of a branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. And he shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. With those words, he breathed his last breath. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open. When the Roman soldier who stood facing Jesus saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God.
I'd like to read from one of our favorite books here at One Life, the Jesus Storybook Bible. The chapter titled, The Sun Stops Shining. So you're a king, are you? The Roman soldiers jeered. Then you'll need a crown and a robe. They gave Jesus a crown made out of thorns and put a purple robe on him. And they pretended to bow down to him. Your majesty, your majesty, they said. Then they whipped him and they spat on him. They didn't understand that this was the prince of life, the king of heaven and earth who had come to rescue them. The soldiers made him a sign, our king, and nailed it to a wooden cross. They walked up a hill outside of the city. Jesus carried the cross on his back. Jesus had never done anything wrong, but they were going to kill him the way criminals were killed. They nailed Jesus to the cross. Father, forgive them, Jesus gasped. They don't understand what they're doing. You say, you say you've come to rescue us, people shouted, but you can't even rescue yourself. But they were wrong. Jesus could have rescued himself. A legion of angels would have flown to his side if he called. If you were really the Son of God, you could just climb down off of that cross, they said. And of course they were right. Jesus could have just climbed down. Actually, he could have just said a word and made it all stop. Like when he healed that little girl and he stilled the storm and he fed 5,000 people. But Jesus stayed. You see, they didn't understand. It wasn't the nails that kept Jesus there. It was love. Papa, Jesus cried, frantically searching the sky. Papa, where are you? Don't leave me. And for the first time, and the last, when Jesus spoke, nothing happened. Just a horrible, endless silence. Tears rolled down Jesus' face. The face of the one who would wipe away every tear from every eye. Even though it was midday, there was a dreadful darkness that covered the face of the world. The sun could not shine. The earth trembled and quaked. The great mountains shook. Rocks split in two until it seemed that the whole world would break apart. That creation itself would tear apart the full force of the storm of God's fierce anger as sin was coming down onto his own son instead of onto his people. It was the only way God could destroy sin and not destroy his children whose hearts were filled with sin. Then Jesus shouted out in a loud voice, It is finished! And it was. He had done it. Jesus had rescued the whole world. Father, Jesus cried, I give you my life. And with a great sigh, he let himself die. Strange clouds and shadows filled the sky. Purple, orange, black, like a breeze. In Romans chapter 5, the Apostle Paul writes that God showed his great love for us in this way, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I just want to walk us through a few of the words. The first one that I want to touch on is the word we. While we were still sinners, every single one of us in the same boat, no one more righteous than another, no one more right or more pure no one closer to God than the rest of us, while we were still sinners. Sinners, disconnected from God, enemies of God, stained by the sin of Adam and Eve, our mother and father. Sin that we could not overcome on our own. 
There was no way for you and I to overcome our sin because God is holy, and where there is holiness, there cannot be sin. We could not get to God on our own because we were sinners. And then the word while. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In the middle of our most sinful moments, in our darkest moment, in the most shadowed moment, that is when Jesus died for us. He came and met us in our worst, in our worst moment, in our reality as sinners. That is where Jesus met us. This is the great mystery of the Incarnation, that God in flesh, a perfect, sinless God, putting on flesh in the person of Jesus, met us in our sin. He did not expect us to come to Him, but instead, He came to us. While we were still sinners, Christ died. He died. He took his last breath. In the early centuries of Christianity, there were myths that Jesus actually didn't die, that they took him off the cross and that there was still breath in his lungs, and then they hid his body, and that he was still alive. But those were only myths. Those were conspiracies. Jesus died because the wages of sin is death. He died our death. He paid the price that only He could pay. He died. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For us. Love for us is what motivated Jesus to go to the cross. Love for us. Those two words, should grab us. Those two words tell us what we need to know about the Father's heart. It was for us that He went to the cross. It is for us that He gave His life. It is for us that He suffered. It is for us that His wrists were pierced with the nails for us. It was His love for us that motivated Him. And now, Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us because of what Jesus has done for us. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you that you love the world. Every single one of us, every single person that you created in your image, every single person that you knelt down and you breathed your breath of life into them, you loved them so much that you sent your Son, Jesus. You took on flesh and walked among us, serving, giving, loving. And then you went to the cross and you paid our price. Death. You took our sin Upon yourself, upon your son Jesus on that cross, you took our sin and in an exchange you gave us righteousness. So tonight, all we have to offer is our whole self. You offered everything. And so tonight we offer ourselves to you. We pray that you would forgive us. We pray that you would lead us in the way of Jesus. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.